Have you found yourself making goals and not executing on them? I have a simple solution for you called OKRs or Objectives and Key Results. I was very skeptical about OKRs when I first read the book or how Google used it or how my organization JP Morgan Chase used it. What really changed my perspective on them was the book Radical Focus by Christina Vodke and I'd like to share my learnings with you. Hi, my name is Anil Jai Singh. I'm a certified Scrum trainer with Scrum Alliance, Chief Product Manager for Concepts and Beyond, and an adjunct faculty with NYU's program of project management. I've worked in product development and product management for three decades, primarily in financial services companies like JP Morgan Chase, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, and several small fintechs and banks. The core principles of OKRs are simple. Objectives, what do you want to achieve? It should be significant, actionable, inspiring and audacious. Key results is how you're going to get it done. These are measurable, verifiable outcomes that help achieve the objective. The key result can be anything measurable such as growth, engagement, <laughs> revenue, performance or quality. Focusing on leading indicators, not lagging indicators. Leading indicators could be numbers of sales agreements signed or support for a candidate or position and or for a future improvement from the last time you had a key result. For example, if the objective is become the leading brand in eco-friendly fashion, a key result could be increase online sales by 50% in the next quarter. According to John Doerr, the author of the first OKR book, OKRs are not a silver bullet. They are not a substitute for strong culture or strong leadership. If these cultural elements are in place, then OKRs can take you to the top of your goal. I've run the New York City Marathon in 2019 and during the pandemic, I slowed down. I want to now pick up and get back into shape. So my personal OKR for running, my objective, run a marathon in under four hours. The key results I want to achieve is join a marathon training group, train four days a week with one long run each week, increase mileage by one mile per week, drink at least five bottles of water every day, sleep at least eight hours every night. If you're looking to become very productive in what you do, your OKR could be objective, increase my productivity. Key results that you want to measure is watch Ali Abdul's YouTube videos and learn from him. Choose four hours every day where I keep myself away from distractions. Install an anti-distraction app for my browser. Take a five minute break every hour. Sleep at least eight hours a day. Take one hour every week to plan work set priorities and track what I achieved. OKRs always made me skeptical. I had been burned with key performance indicators, KPIs at work. And when I learned about them, I still did not know how they would help me execute once I set them. This is when I came across a fantastic book on OKRs, Radical Focus from Christina Botke, an established thought leader in Silicon Valley and her work in LinkedIn, Zynga, Yahoo and other startups. Christina is a lecturer at Stanford in the computer science department. This book tells a fable around a startup whose original goal was to sell gourmet tea to restaurants. There's Hannah, a CEO struggling to lead her team, Jack, a thoughtful designer trying to find his place, and the rest of the team navigating through challenges trying to find that North Star for their company. The team, after a while, starts to feel uneasy. They were unclear why it was taking them such a long time to build a marketplace for gourmet tea. They did get a few restaurants to sign up as customers, but where Hannah found a gold mine of large orders were from suppliers. As a team, they did not really like the idea of selling to suppliers because they sold in bulk and did not know the difference between regular tea and gourmet tea. Over time, it became clear to them that the service had more appeal with suppliers than selling directly to restaurants. They were unsure if they should pivot their vision. This is when Hannah, with guidance from her tea-loving mentors, discovers the power of objectives and key results. Based on the conversation with their mentor, Hannah and Jack decide to pivot to sell to suppliers instead of restaurants. Hannah and Jack quickly construct three objectives with their team. Establish clear values to restaurant suppliers as a quality tea provider. Build a valuable platform for restaurant suppliers to manage orders. And three, build an effective team. Each one having specific key results attached to them with numbers or percentages. The team committed to these goals, but behind the back started making fun of Hannah and her new metrics. 
They really did not believe these metrics are going to help them succeed. Time passed by and their product was still unusable for suppliers. So a lot of the orders were manually keyed in, leading to errors and finally them losing their top supplier. Their initial seed money was running out and they were desperate. This is when the advisor introduces them to Rafael as a candidate CTO for their company. Rafael, having worked with several startups in the valley, suggests them a new method for OKRs. First, come up with an objective and three key results to track it for the overall company. Give each of the key results five out of 10 chance of making it. Add this to the first quadrant. In the second quadrant, add health metrics of the team, including customer satisfaction, team health, and code health. In a third quadrant, add the four weeks pipeline of big stuff that they plan to deliver. And finally, in the fourth quadrant, add mostly priority ones or P1s of the things the team plans to execute this week. Potentially add one priority two or P2. Now, each week, have a meeting with everyone in the team to go over these metrics. Demonstrate the items that were delivered, both technical and sales staff demonstrate what they accomplished and then celebrate. Will they meet all their P1s that week? Perhaps not, but still celebrate what was accomplished and what they learned from that week. This approach really worked for this team who went on to become a successful startup. What this method does is one, reduce micromanagement. Two, focus on core priorities every week that enhance focus among the team. Three, if the priority item is not completed, clearly identify the reason without playing the blame game. Four, over time, really get focused and develop endurance on your goal. Start with one OKR for the company, not three. The one thing that might mean make or break. Each team should have an OKR for their team that ties back to that one company OKR. While each objective might be audacious, the key result needs to be realistic with a five out of 10 approach to realize it and having realistic priorities for each week. Things that the team absolutely believes they can accomplish. An example for a product company that aggregates software development metrics and visualizes them on a single dashboard for the next three months could be, the company OKR is establishing clear value to software development teams who their customer as quality metrics aggregator and visualizer. The key result could be increased subscriptions by 80%, five out of 10 chance of making it. Another key result is self-serve our cloud platform by 50%, five out of 10 making it. And another third key result is revenue of $250,000, five out of 10. The priorities for the first week for these objectives and key results could be, first P1, choose a near-term deal with a customer having at least 2,500 users. The second P1, create a customer service job description. The third P1, the self-service online flow fully designed. Health metrics for the team could be 100% customer satisfaction, the team having time off to learn and experiment. The pipeline of big stuff in the next three months could be, one, closing three deals on our data platform in the next three months. Two, having 50% more leads downloading our product trial. Three, 10% of the leads converting into customers in our paid plan. Suddenly, by laying out your OKRs and defining realistic priorities in the short term and audacious ones in your pipeline and keeping a track of health metrics gives you and your team a realistic chance of executing on your personal or product OKRs. Some key differences between OKRs and KPIs are that KPIs are typically quantitative and focused on outputs like turnover rate, new subscriber count, net promoter score. KPIs are stable. OKRs are focused on future outcomes. They are both qualitative and quantitative and keep changing frequently to drive an outcome. Share what you think about OKRs in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please support us by liking and subscribing to our channel. See you next time.